What's up guys? Today we'll be talking about isovaleric acidemia. So isovaleric acidemia is an organic acidemia caused by an autosomal recessive mutation in the gene IVA on chromosome 15. This gene encodes isovaleral-CoA dehydrogenase, which is a mitochondrial flavoenzyme. And that's the protein that's defective in this disorder. So as far as the pathogenesis is concerned, what we can see is that dietary proteins, which include leucine, which is an amino acid, are catabolized into acetyl-CoA and acetoacetate, which then in turn feed into the citric acid cycle to help us make ATP. Now, if there's a block somewhere in that pathway, for example here, where we have isovaleral-CoA dehydrogenase, which is the enzyme defective in isovaleric acidemia, then we actually end up getting a buildup of isovaleral-CoA and also subsequently isovaleric acid. This isovaleric acid, the body's like, I don't want this, and it converts it, conjugates it to isovalerocarnitine and isovalerocglycine. And carnitine and glycine are the body's two, two of the body's ways to get rid of stuff it doesn't want, and particularly through the urine. Just to show you, the catabolism of L-leucine is a really important biochemical pathway that also has other enzymes which when defective can also lead to organic acidemias. We won't discuss these here, we'll save these for a future video, but 3-MCC and 3-MGC are also two enzymes that can be um, defective. Now I just want to point out this compound here is really interesting. Um, 3-hydroxy-3-methylglutoconyl-CoA because it can be converted not only to acetyl-CoA and acetoacetate, um, but it can also be converted into cholesterol. And the first step in this process is conversion to mevalonic acid by this enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. And if it sounds familiar, it's because it's the protein that's inhibited by statins, which help lower cholesterol. All right, now the epidemiology. So most patients with isovaleric acidemia present in the first two weeks of birth, though they can present really at any age. Then the incidence is about 1 in 250,000. Now most often, Isovaleric acidemia is detected by increased C5 levels on mass spec, which can also be seen in a couple of other disorders, such as 2-methylbutyryl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, and also with patients who take antibiotics containing pivalic acid, which is a 5-carbon compound. So is what, what is the picture that you would expect to see for a patient with isovaleric acidemia? So most often, it's, this is going to be a neonate that looks like they have sepsis. So they're going to have elevated ammonia, they're going to be lethargic, they're going to have poor tone, poor feeding, they're going to be vomiting, which is going to lead to ketoacidosis. They're going to have, classically, a sweaty foot odor from the accumulation of this isovaleric acid. And the way you can tell isovaleric acidemia from a urea cycle disorder is that in isovaleric acidemia, you're going to have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. The anion gap is from the isovaleric acid itself. Again, you're going to have isovaleric acid, an organic acid building up in the blood. And you can also check your acyl carnitine. So again, you're going to have elevated C5 on your acyl carnitine profiles. Now, complications of this disorder, if it presents early and if it goes untreated, include death in about 50% of patients who present as neonates. 
that's really high. And if a patient presents later, this probably means that they're not affected as severely. And so actually, a lot of people can develop normally. And this is in contrast to some of the other organic acidemias that we've talked about already, including methylmalonic acidemia and propionic acidemia, where you don't develop normally and you develop neurologic complications. Now, to make the diagnosis, um, often you'll pick this up on newborn screen, like I said, with an elevated C5. Um, any infant should be started, uh, a workup should be started on them, including uh, BMP, UA, lactate, which would be elevated, at CBC and LFTs. Again, your metabolic labs are going to show isolated elevations in C5, as well as decreased free carnitine because that's being conjugated to the isovaleric acid to help get rid of it. On your urine organic acids, you're going to have urinary isovalerylglycine and 3-hydroxyisovaleric acid. When you check other metabolites, like 2-methylbutyrylglycine, which is elevated in isoleucine, not leucine metabolism disorders, that's going to be normal. And of course, your pavalic acid is going to be normal if you're not on those antibiotics. Finally, you can test for this gene um, using genetic testing and you would expect to find mutations in both alleles because this is a recessive disorder. This is a schematic from the ACMG newborn act sheets for isolated elevated C5. And the big two disorders that you want to think about are isovaleric acidemia, shown here, and the SBCAD deficiency, um, which I spoke about previously. In terms of the management, it's primarily dietary. So you want to have a special metabolic formula that's low in leucine. Again, leucine is the precursor to isovaleryl-CoA, which in turn is converted into 3-methylcrononyl-CoA by our defective enzyme. So you want to decrease the amount of leucine in the diet as well as decrease the amount of protein. You don't want to take it out completely, but just decrease it. You want to avoid fasting. You don't want the body to break down the proteins that it already has and start releasing leucine into the bloodstream. As far as medical management, you can give glycine and carnitine, which, as we see here, can help in the conjugation of isovaleric acid and help excretion of this, of this acid. Lastly, there are support groups for patients and families who are affected by this disorder, and I encourage you to visit this group if you are affected uh, by this disorder. And I'll leave a link down in the show notes below. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like this video, subscribe to this channel, and please consider supporting more videos like this one by joining my Patreon. Thanks.